Hello, this is Gary Fox, and uh, today I'm going to show you how I produce the graphs that I'm uh, using on the uh, on the website. And uh, for those of you that don't frequent the website, I'll show you what I'm talking about. It's graphs that look like this, and uh, what I'm doing is actually calculating what could be some useful stuff. And uh, uh, I'm using it to teach, so I guess it is useful stuff. But uh, I'm creating graphs like this and uh, talking about how that they're generated, uh, talking about what's happening electronically. So I'm sure that the people that follow my website would like to know how to uh, end up getting these kind of graphs. So I'm going to show that. It's probably going to take three steps. Uh, tonight we'll talk about the program called Views. And uh, I import data into it. And I use a program called Python to write the data. And then the way the data is transferred from one to the other is called a CSV file. So I need to talk about all three of those those things. So tonight we'll talk about views. We'll work from the back end toward the front. And the reason for doing that is that it's always nice to know what the final goal is before you uh, before you start going into all the internals of how to get that. At least that's the way I like to learn. Uh, anyhow, okay, so that's what we're going to end up at with. That's kind of the final product. That's one type of final product. Another type of final product, well, actually, we'll use uh, the program itself, Views, and we'll look at this is another one that I generated on the website. So you can see you can have multiple graphs on each one, and you can put the little markers to show each data point so on and so forth and you can put a key in here that shows what each one is. We're going to go through the steps of doing that. I am not intending to show you how uh, to do all of the things that can be done in views. Um, I'm going to show you how I use it uh, and I will show you how to get more info. Okay, we'll open up the program views and that's what we were just in, and this is the way it comes up. Now, the very first thing that I said I would do is that I would show you how to find out more help on it. If you go to the help screen, and views, by the way, can be downloaded uh, in Linux, in Mac, and then also in uh, Windows. So all three uh, operating systems, or the three main ones, can... can uh, download views and use it. I'm using Linux right now. Uh, I'm kind of a Linux fanatic. and uh, But I do like to try, if I can, to find programs that will work in all three, uh, all three operating systems. Alright, there is a help on this menu up here, and if you go to Tutorial, it comes up with a really nice tutorial that shows you all the little steps uh, of how to operate this thing and uh, you just keep hitting the next button and reading what it says and it can do it. There's also help that you can find on the uh, on YouTube. So there are many ways to get to learn how to use this and uh, you're going to see kind of a bad one right here uh, as I show you how I use it. Okay the very first thing that I want is I need a data and I need it in a format called a CSV file. The easiest way to generate a CSV file is to use Excel or use in Linux Libra, Libra Calc. And uh, what you can do, Libra Calc is basically a, a spreadsheet program. On the top row, you want to write what each of the columns is going to be, and then you can punch your data into each column. So I got a column called count. I got a column called going up and the numbers get bigger and a column called going down. And then you can save that which it's already been saved 
But then you can also do a file, save as, and then I can save this in a format called CSV. And when I do, it says that I want to replace it. Yeah, we'll go ahead and replace it. And it says, are you really sure you want to do it in this format? And yes, I do. And so it asked me some questions, and I never read them. <laughs> and it just says uh, only the active tab or the act active sheet was all that was saved. CSV is not a good way to save uh, spreadsheet files. And that's why I saved it originally in the uh, spreadsheet format. So now I have some data. Okay, we're going to go into uh, views again, bring it back up. And what I want to do is import that data, and there's a little tab up here, and it says import data into views. And so I'm going to go to browse. I pushed the wrong button. And I'm going to go to programming directory, and I guess they're called folders now, ZZZ. I gave it a name so I could find it easily. And we're going to open that. And as we open it, it shows what the data looks like. And it looks good to me. And now you can see, well, you will see real soon. And then I close it after I've imported it. Okay. All of those names that we had at the start of those columns are now names of each one of the rows. It shows up here. Okay, we're getting ready to draw a graph. We've got page one open. And we're going to draw this graph. And the type of graph that I always draw is what's called a um, XY plot. And so I'm drawing an XY plot there. And it's this one with the little dots on it. And, uh, okay. So as I draw it, I, it asks me, what do I want for my X data, which is the horizontal? And I'm going to make that count. And then it says, what do I want for my uh, Y data? We're going to do the going up, and I've already got a graph. Okay, I can do some fancy things with this thing. I can give it a label name for what the X axis is, so we'll call it count. And then I can give the y-axis a label, so we'll call this uh, value. Uh, obviously, the names are more meaningful if you have real data, but we just kind of generated stuff here. We can also change what we want the minimum value to be. So let's just say that I wanted to only show five of these. See, I'm on the y, so I need to do 50 make it a reasonable number. And you see it now the scale goes from 50 to 100. I want to go back to auto and just let it do its thing. Could do the same thing with the y with the x axis. I could start it at a minimum of 5 or more. Let's just do the max to 5. And you see that it only went out here where this counts up to 5. We're going to go back to auto. So you see, we got some pretty neat little things we can do. If we really don't like black for our color, we can go down here to this area, and uh, we can first choose the uh, symbol that we want. Got to do it right here. I'm sorry. Uh, we're in the actual graph that we're working with. I could choose the symbol right now. It's a circle. Let's say I like diamonds, and uh, maybe I don't really like like black diamonds. I like red diamonds, and it's got a little black box around it, so I'd like to change that too to also to be red, and I can make the line red also. And you can change those to however you want to. I like a fat line, so you know I'm gonna make it twice as fat as what it is. So we'll make a little bit bigger line there. So yeah, things are starting to look a little better. 
It's all relative well, to what you're trying to do. Okay, we've got one graph. Of, you know, I got some extra data here, so I'd like to show a little bit more. So what I can do, I can put another graph right on that same one. Now it's really nice if I use my X data to be the same. And then my Y data might be with it going up, so with it going down. And now I already have two different colors, but you know I still I uh, I don't like black, so I'm going to change this thing to uh, green. Whoops! I'm going to change all of it to green. And um, I may want to go ahead and change the uh, line thickness again. So we'll make that a little bit wider. We'll make this one big and fat. We'll make it two. The other one was one. Uh, it's whatever you want for whatever you're trying to show. And again, maybe I don't like circles. So I'm going to have a cross. That cross doesn't work too good for that one because we're going at about a 45 degree angle. So we use a plus. And, uh, you can make it whatever you want. If you want the plus to be a little bit bigger, I can make that a little bit bigger also. So you can change this thing to however you want it. Okay, one of the things that I have to do for the pictures, this thing comes up with the page is normally 15 centimeters by 15 centimeters. Uh, it turns out that a 4 to 3 ratio is a normal ratio for for photographs and that's also what WordPress wants for my blog so I usually make this 20 by 15 now the only time I don't do that is if I'm trying to show a circle uh, I have to live with it uh, because a circle I need to have uh, both the X and the Y sizes the page width and the page height to be exactly the same otherwise the circle ends up looking more like an oval but for something like this, this would be perfect. Some of the other things I can do, I can go up here to this x-axis. And let's say that I want to uh, add, add the grid. I can add the main grid here. And it's a dotted line normally. You see where it says hide? I can turn that into, a, click that off, and now I have that grid. Maybe I want that a little bit darker. Maybe I don't want it gray. Maybe I want it black. Maybe I don't want dotted. I want a dashed line. So it looks a little bit bolder. Again, you can do whatever you want to do. Y axis will do the same. We'll first turn it on. And then we can use uh, a dashed line. And we'll make it black. Also. So it's really plain. And then you can even do the sublines. Things are going to get really busy here when I do that. And let's see. It says light gray. Whoa. So let's make it gray. Gray, gray. And you can see I've even got all the lines on there. You can, And you continue on with that. That pretty much is what I do with all of the graphs that I create um, I can add a little bit more okay we want to go into this one there's a thing on here called key text and this one will be called going up okay and we'll call the other one going down And now we'll go up to the graphic graph itself. <laughs> Trying to show something and then I don't remember what I'm doing. Oh, I know what I need to do. Yeah, duh. It's up here. Do plot key. And that shows what each one of those are. And uh, 
you have to add that extra point there. And I'm sorry I forgot. Uh, I've only done it a million times, but I kind of forgot what I was doing there. When you click on this thing, you can move it around wherever you want to. And unless you got a really busy graph like that first one I showed, normally you can keep it off the lines. So that explains what each one of those are, what each graph is. It also explains, shows how you can change the colors. It's a very easy program to use. It's uh, what I call poke and hope. You can poke on the little buttons just like I was doing there when I obviously forgot what I was doing. Uh, you can do a fit a function to data. I have not done that. Uh, and you have lots of other graphs that you can use. Um, and a lot of this stuff I've tried, but you know, it's uh, it's not what you normally do. There's a, a few, you can do a polar graph, and let's create a new page. We can have multiple pages on this thing, so we're going to uh, page and then on this page we're going to have a polar graph and uh, now we have a graph that we can show for instance the uh, the phasers that I've been showing for the different uh, different elements uh, for the voltage and the current and so on and so forth so you know, like I said you have lots of different graphs um, so it's good. One of the other things, uh, by the way, <clears throat> we go up here to the x-axis data. I can plot that on the log scale. And uh, it's not very interesting on what we're doing right now, but oh, if you looked at the previous one that I did, and let's see if we can open up another one. Uh, let's go back to, let's go to programming. Well, we'll just open up one that I know I've done something with. And we'll pick uh, this one, which is the one I just showed. You see that the frequency right in here, the scale on the bottom was done in log. Um, yeah, if I do the x-axis right here, you see, I've got log clicked on that. And so I'm doing a logarithmic scale on the bottom so that every power of 10 is exactly the same amount of space. So again, there's a lot of things you can do. And uh, as you can see on this one, there was four different graphs all on one thing. Then there was the key was turned on. And then uh, each one of these describes the key text that goes inside that little, little box. This was a case where I couldn't fit the box without putting it over top of the graph, which is not nice, but there's like nothing else I could do. As you can see, the X and Y axis have some meaning on this. They're not names like count and value. And uh, so that's a very useful program. Uh, we will go into how this, you can see the CSV file here is a really big one, and I'm creating some that are even worse. Uh, we'll go into what those files look like in the next, uh, next video. Appreciate you listening. Hopefully you got something out of this. Uh, check out views. I will put a link at the bottom of, in the, uh, in the uh, notes to tell you where to go to get link, uh, views. Also look and see if they have a beta version out. If there's a beta version, I would recommend not using it. Uh, there's some people that have been downloading the uh, CAD that have downloaded a beta version, and they're having a few problems. Appreciate you listening. This is Gary Fox of Create Make.